Hey guys and welcome to a bit of a different video today. We're going to be looking at steps you should take when you're going to research a potential pet, especially a reptile. And if that pet is a leopard or crested gecko then you're in the right place because I do have plenty of videos. But basically the other day I saw a post on ZA Reptiles Instagram page. She said in a reel, just because information is out there doesn't mean a beginner knows that they should be looking for it or what sources are trustworthy. Everyone starts somewhere. We should want to help them with their journey. And this kind of spoke to me because, yes, I have hundreds of videos. I've been running this channel in October for 10 years. And because I've owned geckos so long, for me, it's obvious what you should look up. But I don't always remember that actually, as a beginner, you might not know what you should be looking up. So that's why I wanted to make sort of this guide today and feel free to take notes, sit back, relax, and hopefully this points you in the right direction no matter what reptile you choose to get. And whilst I still have your attention, if you are new to reptiles, please, please look into supplements. They're not optional, especially if you have like a leopard gecko. We see so many times leopard geckos having MBD. I talk to people who say they've watched loads of my videos and yet they didn't know their animal needed supplements. I don't know if because of the term supplements, it sounds optional, but it's not. Uh, your animal can get very sick deformed and even die. So do not skip over this topic. We'll talk about it a little more in a moment. Um, but yeah, super, super important. Now, as I said, I have hundreds of videos on this channel. They are all split into playlists so that can make it easy to find, or you can type in a keyword into my channel and the relevant video should come up. Alternatively, you can support the channel by buying my guides, which takes some of my YouTube videos organizes them into topics, transcribes and translate them. So you can type something in, it'll take you directly to that exact part of the video where I talk about the subject you're looking into. And if you have any questions, you can contact me through the guides. I'll leave a link in the description. And if you like eBooks, I have actually written one all about leopard gecko care over on leopardgeckomerch.com, covering pretty much all the topics you need to know. So yeah, if you're thinking of getting a leopard gecko, you're in the right place. But this whole video can be used for any pet, any reptile, amphibian, invert, you know, anything you're considering buying. But yeah, that was my self promo over, but I do have a lot of information. But anyway, let's look at the first few questions you need answers for, because these ones are kind of make or break questions of whether or not this animal is right for you. So number one, how much space do they take up? Do you have the room? Like for example, I may need your feedback on this so let me know in the comments below. I've been debating which would be my next reptile. Would it be a gargoyle gecko or a blue tongue skink? I feel more comfortable with a gargoyle because I have a crested gecko and chihua. Blue tongue skink is very different than what I'm used to, but one thing that makes me a bit wary of the blue tongue skink is how big the tank needs to be. And this would take up space that I could potentially use for future reptiles. So it's like, you know, that's something I'm considering. So do you have the room for this potential pet you want to keep? The next thing you would have to consider is what does the animal eat? Are you happy keeping insects in the house or frozen mammals or birds in a freezer? Maybe your animal just eats fruit and veg. Number three, how much are the startup and ongoing costs for this animal? Now, I did a quick whip round internet reptile uh, for a leopard gecko, and I'll leave all the product links below. So if you did want to just go through and pretty much add all these things to the basket, this is sort of the stuff I would recommend. But the total came to this. So as you can see, it can be expensive to start up, but you can also get secondhand stuff like secondhand vivariums and stuff. As long as you disinfect them, you can definitely save some money there. As for ongoing costs for a leopard gecko, I'd say it isn't that much. As discussed in my energy video, electricity prices aren't too bad. It's like two pence a day to run a UV lamp and food isn't too expensive either. If you wanted a pet that required quite a specialized or expensive diet, um, you know, would you be able to keep up with these costs? These are the kind of things you need to think about. And the fourth and final question you need to ask is, have you considered how long these animals live? So some people were quite surprised when I said Gizmo, my eldest gecko is 16. They didn't realize leopard geckos could potentially live up to 20 years or more. So it's good to know this information before purchasing a pet that you're happy to take on that commitment. 
So now we've gone through all of the sort of make and break questions, let's look at topics that you'll want to explore to ensure you pretty much cover everything you need for a potential pet. Now, I will warn you beforehand, this might seem a little overwhelming, there might be a lot of stuff to note down here, but if you want to thoroughly research a pet, this is a good list to follow. So number one, setup. What size tank you'll need, what heating and lighting the animal requires, which in the case of a leopard gecko, there are a few different options, but I currently use a deep heat projector, jungle dawn LED bar, and a Pro T5 shade dweller. These are all by Arcadia Reptile, and I just genuinely really like their products, and they're actually now available in PetSmart for any US and Canadian keepers out there wondering. You'll also need a thermostat. So with any heating equipment you're using, it's extremely important to use a thermostat. I know when people come from the aquatics world, you know, a lot of those heaters come with a thermostat built in. Generally, this isn't the case with reptiles. You'll also want to know what is a safe substrate for your reptile. Now, frustratingly, this is quite a debated topic in the reptile world, so you might not always get a straight answer. For me, I use Earthmix Arid. If you can't get that in your country, then you could use a topsoil and play sand mix. I know a lot of people do that. Um, I know like, for example, with beardies, some people say yes, definitely give them loose substrate. Others say absolutely not. So this is certainly a tricky one that you're gonna have to do a deep dive into. You may also want to look into decoration, so some animals prefer a lot of places to hide and climb, others just require really deep substrate, so just look into other people's setups as well and see what they're doing and this can give you a bit of inspiration. Then you want to look into diet, so what do they eat, how often do you have to feed them, how much will their food cost, definitely learn about dusting the food with supplements, once again a bit of a complex uh, subject. I use Earth Pro A, Calcium Pro Magnesium and Revitalize D3 alongside a UV system and actually recently on Instagram someone was saying that they switched to this as well and they realised how much easier it is. Now obviously if you just get into reptiles it can be a bit complex, all these different things you need to learn, um, but for me this works really well but there are lots of different brands out there that provide supplements, just ensure that you do. Uh, the other thing is gut loading the food which is essentially feeding your feeder insects before they get fed to your reptile. Then handling and taming. So is the animal you're looking into good at being handled or are they more of a display animal? Like I really wanted a giant day gecko, but the more research I did into them, the more I realized they're more of a display animal. Like it takes a long time to get them used to being handled and even then their skin can tear. So um, as someone who likes to handle their pets a lot, that probably isn't a great pet for me. Some people prefer to have an animal that they don't really interact with very much, but they just see. Uh, some people might want a feistier animal like a toke or an animal that can be very docile like a crested gecko. You may want to look into whether or not the animal likes to live alone or does better in groups. Like a leopard gecko you want to leave on their own, don't try to cohab, they pretty much tolerate each other until they don't anymore. Some other questions you may want to look into is does the reptile go into brumation or hibernation at certain parts of the year? Um, would they need to see a vet regularly, like do they need their nails clipped? Are there exotic vets in your area? Is there anyone or anywhere who would look after your reptiles if you go on holiday? Then you may want to look into health. Now I feel like this topic gets skipped over a bit because, you know, we don't want to think about our pets being sick and sometimes we can be more reactive rather than proactive. So we'll look up these things when our pet isn't doing well but we're not aware of them before. But it's kind of good to know about metabolic bone disease, stick tail in leopard geckos and other parasites. Are there common illnesses that certain species suffer? Is this species fairly hardy or can they go downhill fast? I know chameleons can be very sensitive. With leopard geckos you may want to know about enigma syndrome and how to spot a healthy animal when you're looking to buy one from a breeder or a shop. So all in all, there is a lot to think about, a lot of research to do, but try not to feel overwhelmed, okay? Just take it step by step, make it fun, get yourself a notepad. Each of these topics can almost be like a chapter. And when you read books, watch videos, you can take notes, you can cross-examine those notes when you get them from different sources and take your time, especially leopard geckos, like they're always available from shops or from breeders. So there's no rush to sort of get one right now. 
I can guarantee you're going to feel so much more comfortable and confident if you've taken your time to prepare for this gecko and you're going to be far more excited as well. So um, it, it does seem like a lot, especially if you're new to the reptile hobby, but it will be worth it in the long run. But yeah, as I said, I will leave helpful links below as well as product links. And if this video has helped, please boot that like button and consider subscribing. But thank you for watching, guys, and goodbye.